on behalf of the European Conservatives and Reformers, Mr Callanan. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr President. I am becoming uh, increasingly concerned that a sort of corrupting complacency is starting to take hold in EU corridors of power. Many seem to now believe that the worst of the crisis is over. After all, we've signed a new treaty to solve it all. And some are implying that Europe is really okay. The only problem is a few Mediterranean countries have a problem with their public finances and nothing that the new treaty can't put right. Well, Europe is not okay. The underlying economic weakness is a problem shared by the whole of our continent and the new treaty is simply an irrelevance to most of it. I'm pleased to say that uh, two member states, uh, both from uh, parties uh, led from my group, have been honest enough to say that there is no point in signing this treaty. Others have signed it and they've indicated that they don't really believe that it applies to them. Before the ink was even dry on the treaty, Spain and the Netherlands said that they weren't going to comply with the provisions of it. The European Council has wasted considerable energy on a treaty that will make no practical difference to the fundamentals whilst taking decisions at the same time that will condemn the Greek people to a generation of poverty. Greek now, Greece now faces the prospect of one of the longest recessions in recorded history, a collapse in living standards and levels of unemployment unseen in Europe since the 1930s. The solution, of course, is not easy and it's not without cost, but a new course must surely now be followed. Measures are required so that Greece can organise an orderly default, but a default that needs to be complemented by leaving the euro so that devaluation can save its economy in the short term while structural reforms are taken to rebuild it in the medium term. But the complacency shown when it comes to the fundamental state of the EU economy is equally profoundly shocking. There was a letter signed by 12 heads of government from three political families in this House that was presented to the Council. It was an opportunity to relaunch a constructive growth agenda in Europe. But the initial reaction was, Mr Van Rompuy, as you know, very cool. Surely the time has now come for you to stop behaving as if council communiques have been delegated to the foreign ministries of France and Germany. Why didn't you immediately face the opportunity to focus on a positive, forward-looking agenda for real economic growth? Perhaps when you asked the council to put jobs on the agenda, you were in fact only referring to yours. And congratulations on your reappointment, by the way. And Mr Barroso, shouldn't this be the kind of growth agenda that is the centrepiece of the work of your Commission and should define its purpose? Isn't that what we were promised? The global competitive challenge requires a determined policy response from the whole Commission, not just from one or two Commissioners who understand what's at stake. Perhaps the Commission should spend a little more time on pursuing real reform and a little less time on producing silly racist martial arts videos. And I hope that you will also take this opportunity to condemn Sunday's remarks from the President of France, calling for restriction, calling for more protectionism on trade. We should be abolishing trade barriers, not erecting more of them. Apparently last week President Sarkozy also said that there are too many foreigners in France. Well, I'm a foreigner in France and I say to him that I'd be very happy not to have to come back to this Parliament in France every month. And it's his government that actually makes us come here in the first place. So there are several hundred foreigners who would be very happy not to come back to France every month if that is really what President Sarkozy wants.